welcome to the first episode of skincare in the car at target my name is jessica and this is diana hey we are going to be doing a five episode mini series and we're just going to be talking about skincare in the car it's going to be a very candid conversation to educate our viewers about different aspects of skincare all right so we're going to jump right in the first thing we want to talk about is our basics in our skincare routine so for me i think the most important thing in my skincare routine is probably my eye cream my spf and my moisturizer and diana what are your favorites what are your most things that you want to do so for me it's every day uh, a cleanse i uh, do every single day a serum to help retain some moisture and then just regular moisturizer and then a chapstick as well with spf in it yes yeah so those are the things that I focus on mostly every single day. Um, I try to keep up with them as much as possible. I feel like missing one of those steps can just throw like my week off because I'm so used to doing them. Um, but everybody's different. I definitely know that the three basics for anyone just starting off would uh, most importantly be your cleanser to help remove any excess dirt, oil. Um, I feel like I would bounce between like exfoliation and toner, exfoliating maybe not necessarily every day. No, I would um, say exfoliate like two to three times a week max. You don't want to overdo it. Yeah, um, then a toner just help regulate your uh, pH balance. And then a moisturizer. Of course there are products on the line that you can kind of, um, get like a dual purpose out of them like Clinique makes a liquid exfoliate and toner it's part of their three-step process so there's definitely things on the market I'm not sure if you yeah. know of any other like tone exfoliates well I mean so I think we first have to talk about the difference between a physical exfoliator and a chemical exfoliator okay. so when we talk yeah. about liquid exfoliators we're talking about exfoliators that have alpha hydroxy acids in them those usually come in a liquid form versus a scrub or something like that like I really like the Dermalogica um, Dirt Daily Microfoliant, and that's a rice oh, yeah. bran powder, and yeah. it's really gentle because sugar is way too aggressive for the face. I don't recommend sugar or salt scrubs on the face. The skin is just too delicate there to Definitely. be under that type of stress, and you know you only get one face, so you really got to take care of it, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, and that's you know why we wear the SPF as well. So I use a chemical exfoliator I was talking to her about this on the way here how I really should be doing it every other day But I probably just do it a couple times a week. Um, it's a lactic acid Exfoliator, it's one of the products that's been in my routine for over 10 years. It's a skin ceuticals wow. lactic yeah, lactic acid toner. It's just always been so good to my skin. It's always made my skin great. And then I recently added in the daily microfoliant from Dermalogica. And I really like that because it's a rice powder. It's not too abrasive on the skin. You still have that grit that you can feel, which is really good too. I mean, exfoliation is something like we said, two to three times a week. It's hard to stay on top of your routine, but it can be done. And it's always for the best. When you're on top of your routine, you will see the results in your skin oh, 100%. Of of course but like anything else we always want to remind everybody that it is never an overnight um, change it definitely I would say um, definitely goes by your age with how uh, quickly you'll see the change uh, with me being only 21 years old I would definitely say my I would see the change after the first 21 days and so that's about two and a half weeks Say. yeah pushing about three. that pushing three yeah, yeah I think about three weeks and then um, you always want to give new products a period of 21 to 28 days before you call it quits um, unless of course you have some terrible allergic reaction of course, of course stop yeah. use immediately that's why it's super important to patch test which means you just put a little of the product on a non-sensitive area of the face right here and you do that for about three days in a row and then you kind of evaluate if you have sensitive skin um, and so, yeah, like our bodies, you know, we get periods, things like that as women, our skin cycles and periods of 21 to eight days, 
21 to 28 days. So that's where we get that number from. So it's really good. I personally like to date all my products so I can keep track of it because it's really hard to keep track of when you start and stop new products. Um, so that's definitely a tip that helps me a lot. Um, but yeah, everyone should exfoliate. It's super important. Um, and do your best to stay on top of it. But if you don't, it's okay. Remember, if you get off your routine, you can always get back on track. Yeah. Okay, so the yeah, next yeah. thing we're going to be talking about is eye cream. So no eye creams. <laughs> yes. Um, Diana, like she said, she's 21 and I'm 26. So eye cream is a bit more important to me. But even if yeah. you're 12 years old or, you know, 65, eye cream is something everyone should be using because this is the thinnest part of our skin on our face. It's the most delicate, it's the most fragile, it's the first place you lose collagen, I'm pretty sure, and it's really important to take care of it. So, you know, we can always help you find which eye cream works for you and you know based on your needs and things like that but it's super important to use eye cream at least once a day if you can do two times a day you're a freaking superstar but um i really like i just started using the mad hippie the mad um, hippie yeah I great things about the brand yeah, yeah the brand is really cool they have a lot of transparency which i love um and they always put on the box like how many actives they have in it so i think oh. in the eye cream yeah. there's like 18 or 14 actives and peptides and it actually smells really good too which is cool because i don't use anything with artificial fragrance in it because i can't be sure yeah. of what it is because Definitely. the fda doesn't regulate it and so you know when you see fragrance or perfume on the back of a box that could be thousands of different ingredients so i don't use anything like that so none of my products usually smell like super nice like a spa which mm -hmm. is like part of the reason why people like doing things so the mad hippie one smells like pomegranate and white tea and it's mm -hmm. just such a nice thing to like have that uh, that aromatic smell because it's the last step of my routine i always do eye cream last because you want to think about applying products in the form of thinnest to thickest and that's how you can always kind of remember it but i do like the mad hippie one what other eye creams do you like diana um i personally right now i'm in school uh to become an esthetician so skincare therapist um i really do like the aveda one um i like what the brand stands for the eye cream is a little bit on the thicker side so you will get um, more hydration from it which i have noticed from using it in school i have also been using the clinic all about eyes but like jessica said earlier um i am a little bit younger so i think from my standpoint in some parts of me want to say that it's not necessary for me to use it but of course the skin therapist in me wants to say that it is is necessary for everybody um you can use it at any age eye, cr eye cream really has no age limit um and or minimum or minimum and i definitely feel like anybody can use extra hydration just around the area even if you feel like hey i'm super oily like i don't want to grease up anymore this hydration isn't don't think of it as like most I don't think any eye creams have oil in them. Some do. Some do. Yeah. But um, most of them are just, uh, you got to think about putting water into your skin and not the like thickness of like oil being onto your skin and being afraid that it's going to make you more oily. Mm -hmm. If your skin needs the water, it's definitely going to get it from your products uh, just because skin is the last part of your body to receive it. So if anything else needs it in your body, it's definitely going to them first. And we want to keep our youth honestly the eyes really tend to show it all and i know that a lot of our uh, viewers can attest to that but you know that's not anything that little eye cream can't help with and then just keeping up with your skincare all the time um you have told me about the which one the keels the keels, keels. one is nice Avocado. for beginners yeah. yeah a lot of hydration yeah i definitely need to see if I can pick that one up try it out and the good thing about uh, products is that most companies do make things in travel sizes right so you don't ever f fully have to commit to yourself if you're saying like hey this eye cream is like $48 I don't know if I can spend that right now I've definitely researched into seeing if they have a travel size even 
through like um, so like the twenty eight dollar version is actually their travel size, the which travel. lasted me like six to nine months when yeah. I was actually using that. So mm -hmm. that was really cool that that lasted for so long because it was a really good eye cream. And I, I think it's like kind of ridiculous that they make such a big one. It would take you so long so to long use to that. It. And it's kind of like, why would you need that much? I mean, and mm -hmm. a little goes such a long way, but I will say that when I was using that, I really felt like my skin was instantly brighter. Yeah. Like the under eye area, it provides a brightening to it. You really, it gives you like a little oomph, but it's really thick to wear during the day. So, you know, you have to think about that too. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I'm also using the Biosance, their new one. It's the um, marine algae eye cream. It's okay. supposed to be like tightening and firming. So I'm using that at night. My mom and I are actually splitting it. It's a new product um, that we wanted to try together, but we weren't sure about it. And so we are using that. And I think that it really does help. I mean, I not that I have a lot of fine lines, but I do feel like I have a few and I feel like it's, it's like when you start to recognize it, that's when you can start preventing with anti-aging stuff. Um, and some of it's genetic, some of it is sun exposure, you know, it's going to be kind of up in the air, but I mean, no matter what your situation is genetically, physically, whatever, you can always give the eye area some love. So that is the moral of, of the story with eye cream. Um, use it, get it, um, you know, make sure that, you know, when you're buying an eye cream that there are performance ingredients in it. So look at the ingredients list. What is going to be working for you? You know, what are you paying for? Um, and so that is like my best advice with the eye cream situation. Um, this is getting so dark in here. Yeah. Let me just, oh, there. there. <laughs> okay, great. Yay. All We're back. Right. So yeah, that's kind of the wrap on eye cream. Basically, everybody should use it. I mean, there's a lot of good, cheaper options out there. I know that the Biosance one I'm using is $54, and the Mad Hippie one is like $24.99, I think, yeah, which is like not like bad, right honestly, for an eye cream. Um, when it comes to eye cream, you're probably going to be paying around $30, I would say. It's probably like a yeah. good median price for eye creams um, because... I don't know. People just like to upcharge for eye creams. Um, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know why that is. Eye cream is usually like a really expensive thing. Definitely. Sure. I feel like eye cream would be my more so more on the expensive side of my skincare. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next to my serum. I feel like. Yeah. Because we both use the Genifique yes. serum and we love it. We both use the sensitive formula and we found out recently that the reason that it's so good is because it's a productive bacteria it's a probiotic yes. so that's the main ingredient in there and that just helps with like texture brightness everything and that's what I really like about it um and it really does a good job I've been I'm on my second bottle oh, I think you I are am, too yeah well I think I'm I think I'm probably at like 25% left of my second really? bottle. Really? Okay. I'm probably so. about like either between 75% and 50% left of my second bottle. Yeah, I use it religiously. I use that thing every single day. Um, I personally have eczema on my cheeks, so I get super dry there, and my texture has been um, a lot more noticeable. Probably, I would say, around last year, I started noticing it a lot. It would break out in um, like red patches, and um, that helped clear it up a lot. Of course, I had to change up my skincare routine to then fit my what was my new condition that I just found mm -hmm. about. Um, but the Genifique Sensitive, I've been maybe how long does it take you to get through the bottle? I'd probably say like. Um. So mm -hmm. I would say I started my first bottle in the middle of july and i feel like that took me to the middle of september so like about two ish months give or take i'm also like i use a lot of it like i mm -hmm. i do a he i do a hefty dose because i'm like it's so good for my skin i just want all of the all moisture of even though i'm really like oily and kind of acne prone mm -hmm. i really feel like especially at night it doesn't matter how much hydration you pile on because yes. you're just sleeping. Yeah, so, like, yeah, give yeah. your skin back, like, anything it will take, honestly. If you can just pack on the extra moisture. So, I use a heavy hand with the Genifique. Heavy um, hand. I definitely do use it a little heavier at night. I, um... I only use it at night. You just only use it at I'm, night. Just because I'm kind of cheap, you know? Yeah. I use it night and day. 
Um, and I think I've been using it probably, I want to say I started it in May. I think Maybe. you started in June, like a few weeks before I did. Because we got it, mm. at, and then we tried it, and you were like, oh, I saw it. I remember having this conversation. I feel like that sounds about right. Like May, June, Some, June. Something, yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Something around that. But yeah. um, it's definitely helped clear my skin out. Um, my skin looks awesome now. Uh, not to toot my own horn. Yeah, but, no, she's got great skin, really. I'll, I, tell, I'll be yeah. the first to tell you. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, definitely have seen a difference when it comes to that. So that's something that, like... I'm on it all the time. I, it's like my child. I won't ever forget it. I, I know. I love the Genifique Sensitive. I love the Genifique Sensitive too. It was really a good product. And I think that's the first product that I've used that's kind of reeled me into the whole, I can't live without a serum. Oh my like God. I, I can't do it. I know. Serums are so important. Um, I was just talking about this with a couple of women at the event yesterday. They were, I think... Maybe, and they're like, they were at least 50, probably, mm -hmm. um, give or take. I'm bad at this. But they were like, we never use serums. Like, oh, do you use a serum? And I was like, not only do I use a serum, I use three <laughs> serums. I I love serums. It's superfoods for your skin. Like, why? I don't know why anyone wouldn't. And so they, I told them, I was like, look, ladies, you know, serums are where it's at. Like, I know you're a little late to the game and you're a little bit new, but, like, you can benefit and they actually got serums yesterday so that That's was great. yeah i That's know great. serums are great because so like the way jennifique is described it's not a serum it's not an oil it's like its own category but you put it on first before everything you know kind of reiterating that thinnest to thickest and that makes all your products work better better for you and that's the same with any serum you know you should always put your moisturizer on damp skin whether you use a mist or a serum or whatever just because it's going to absorb better and you're going to get more bang for your buck so like if you're not sure if your moisturizer is working for you try it on damp skin because that really really helps in terms of like absorbency and mm -hmm. like all that stuff um, and then another thing is that, you know, if you're using an oil in your routine, which a lot of people are, mm -hmm. you, that should be the final step, like after eye cream, after everything, because it's hard for products to penetrate oil. So like, let's say you put your oil on first, then you put like, you know, let's say you have a spot treatment, you have a toner, like whatever. It's really hard for things to go through that and get to your skin. So you want to do your serum as kind of like your primer of skincare. And then you want to lock it all in, like the settings spray of your skincare is going to be the oil on top and I like to just like pat mine in just to avoid rubbing on the skin but yeah um we love Genifique it's a great product definitely I'm, I'm definitely like hooked them. and yeah, everyone always says it is too I mean it's a great product I mean Lancome is a good line you're going to get good results from those products for sure um but we really love the Genifique sensitive we're pretty loyal to yeah, that yeah um, it's definitely a, a favorite on the list yeah absolutely I know it is a little pricey it definitely is a little pricey, but I like to try to balance my money out with yeah. my skincare products. Exactly. So I don't ever want to, I don't know, it's like it's like going without water for yeah, a couple days. I don't I ever want to go a couple days without skincare. If I fall off for a little bit, I need to hop right back into yeah. it. Yeah, it's know. so hard, but like... You really got to maintain it. Um, I mean, I basically don't buy clothes at all, ever. I just buy skincare. <laughs> I don't go out with friends that often. Um, I'm usually either just saving for skincare or saving for a plane ticket for a big trip. Like, skincare <laughs> is the focus of my life. I don't do anything besides that. You have to budget for your skincare. You really, like, if you're not going to buy expensive products, that's fine. Like, you can find cheaper products that work. You're just going to have to commit to putting in that research and that time. And that mm -hmm. is, like, where we kind of, you know, run into issues because people don't want to put in time. But, I mean, on my page on Instagram, I try to help people along with that and kind of cut some of that uh, kind of that work out of it because I do a lot of research I'm always researching <laughs> things and I'm kind of psycho about it but that's okay and yeah all right all right I'm going to talk about SPF yes next. SPF is so important I talk about this yes. on my Instagram page all the time I try to make myself feel really guilty about not wearing SPF um, because I wanted like convince myself like to do better every day that I don't wear SPF I try to tell myself that that's like one day longer my pimple scars are gonna linger that's where one more line on my face which is probably not true but I need to tell myself that because I need to commit it needs to be every day 
I also like to put my sunscreen on top of my moisturizer. I don't believe in moisturizers that have sunscreen in them. I know it's a controversial issue, but my theory is, is that it's getting watered down from the other stuff in the moisturizer and I'm not getting the full effect. So, and I also like my moisturizer to act as a barrier between my pores and my sunscreen. I don't know if that's actually true. We should fact check that, but I don't know. That's how I yeah. feel about it. I, and I really like the coats sunscreen. Yeah, I would definitely say, um, I, it's not that I, like, I personally still have a couple moisturizers in that I have used that have the SPF, but I don't rely on that SPF. Mm -hmm. I would personally rather go out and buy just an, its own SPF and then incorporate it into my skincare versus relying on a moisturizer with only 25 SPF. Um, and I also, shoot, what was I going to say? Hold on. No, that's okay. Yeah. I was also going to say, like, I'm so psycho about sunscreen that I've considered getting my car windows tinted because I'm convinced uh -huh. that, like, I have more freckles on this arm and this side of my face because this is my driving side, and it worries me. Uh, you know, like, the tops of yes. my hands while I'm driving are getting so much sun exposure, and, like, everyone always tells me that, like, you can always tell how old a person is by, by how their hands. hands look, and I'm yes. like, so that's I'm why... nuts about my hands. I'm, I try to be. I try to be. And, like, any leftover serum or moisturizer I always rub oh, yeah. onto my hands never wipe it off on a towel because you're just literally throwing away money and these <laughs> hands your hands need it give it to your hands get back to your hands oh I was gonna what I was going yeah. to say was um I know it is a big topic about um someone buying skin um, SPF for their skincare versus buying SPF for their makeup so mm. like a uh, foundation with say like say a foundation has like 30 SPF and your moisture only has 25 it's not like you're getting 25 plus 30. No, it's SPF. not. They're not. It's, mm -mm. it's not like math. We don't add this no. on top of each other. You're only getting the... Would you only be getting the 25 from your moisturizer? Yeah, I would say it's safe to assume you're getting the lower of yeah. the two numbers. And also... Don't use anything besides zinc or um, titanium dioxide because there's a lot of other things out there like avabenzone, homosalate is a huge endocrine system disruptor, which means it's going to be disrupting your hormones. Um, so don't use that. Just stick to zinc and titanium dioxide. It won't, it won't be the end of the world if you can't do it and when something is better than nothing. But course, try to yeah. clean up your sunscreen if you can. Your your body and your mind and everyone, all of you, will thank you later. And then for anyone who doesn't believe in the SPF and is just like, oh, it's fine, like I don't burn. You're wrong. I <laughs> would advise you to go on Google really quickly and just search up um, truck drivers seeing half of their face with it being exposed as a driver in the sun versus the other side of their face that isn't exposed that's facing the passenger seat it is astonishing astonishing the, the difference it it's is bad. ridiculous someone can bad. look 95 on one side and 82 on the other and i would much rather look 82 than 95 I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if that's what it comes down to, yeah, yeah. like 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the thing about it is that when you're doing sunscreen and, like, preventative stuff, like, um, people our age or even in your, like, 30s, I would even go as far as saying your 40s. Like, when you're wearing sunscreen, it's not for, like, tomorrow. It's for, like, the next 10 years. Of that's course. why we take care of our skin because it's a you're, – you're in it for the long haul. You know what I mean? You have mm -hmm. to take care of your skin now so that you can keep it up later. Later. it's all about maintaining you know and it's definitely easier to prevent than to correct a hundred percent and cheaper so much cheaper, cheaper. so, so if you're cheaper. like breaking your back over a 22 dollars sunscreen remember that that's money you're saving on botox laser peels whatever crazy stuff they're gonna have out you know what i mean there's nothing wrong with people who make adjustments i'm just saying if you can save that money like why wouldn't you so that's that. I mean, yeah. sunscreen is ride or die, do or die. You of have course. to do sunscreen. It's like so important. It speaks I, for itself. Yeah. It definitely yeah. does. Yeah. And I think the last thing we wanted to talk about was chapstick. Chapstick. The yes. lips. The lips. That is definitely my biggest thing. Um, I pick up my lips a lot. I feel like I've been doing it this whole video. But. Um, most of my sun damage is in my lips. We had an event at our work where I got to see 
where all my sun damage was. And Same. <laughs> all my sun damage was right in my cheeks, right around this area, and then my lips. Ridiculous. My lips were bright red. Um, and from then on, I was just like, all right, I use chapstick every day. I need a chapstick with the SPF now every day. I know it is a little hard to find one that works for everybody. Um, some people have more sensitivity around the mouth, so they mm -hmm. could break out a little easier. Some people have allergies to certain things. Um, I am currently using, I believe it's the Kula chapstick mm, okay. with the SPF in it. Um, I, it tends I haven't to work tried that one. I it's need nice, an SPF yeah. chapstick really badly, so yeah. maybe I'll give that one a try. Yeah, but uh, chapstick is definitely one of my biggest things, especially with the SPF in it. Um, I'm already big on my SPF uh, during the day on my skin, but even being like out, summer just passed, even like I never put the SPF on my lips, I never thought of that, and I never thought about how much sun exposure my lips are getting and how sensitive they are already. You know, my lips tend to peel a lot, they tend to get dry, so adding the sun damage into that is not helping me. So I needed to try to prevent. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try the cool one. Yeah. Do you know how much it is offhand? I do not, I wanna say it might be 18, okay. but it, that also might be a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's I feel a like lot. I feel like 18's probably the max okay. that it is, okay. and yeah. then less. I know I feel you're like, not like huge on like sun bum. No, but, I'm not. I'm not yes, a big fan of the yeah. sun bum. I'm not. Yeah. Um, I was using that for a little while, but I didn't know that Kula made one. So I want to check that out yes. um, because yeah. I really want to up my lip care, which is why I kind of did a little bit of an impulse buy. So I was buying some stuff for my birthday last month and I tried that Biosans vegan uh, lip balm. Yes. It's really good. I mean, it's awesome. one thing. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of anti-aging in it. It's got the algae, and um, it's got a couple other things that I can't remember right now, but I really am glad to be using something that's anti-aging. I wasn't sure if I was going to like anything more than the Bioderma lip balm. Um, I really like that one. I've been using that one for a year and a half, but I liked that the Biosense one was so focused on plumping and anti-aging because that's something I'm definitely worried about. Um, I've even noticed that my lipstick has started running like in the little creases of my lips oh, no. I know I'm so yeah. bombed I know it's just like I think it's just like my I think it's my lips have aged I think it's mm -hmm. what it is is that um and I haven't been wearing sunscreen on my lips and so that's why that that was a wake-up call to me I was like I need to handle this and I'm gonna <laughs> get on this and so yeah, I just think that that's really good to use, and I'm definitely going to check out the Kula one because I need one for um, with SPF during the day, but at night, the Biosense, the vegan lip balm, it's really good, and it's super hydrating. I wouldn't say the hydration lasts as long as the Bioderma, but I think that there's more performance ingredients in the bio, mm -hmm. um, the Biosense, so I'm, I'm going to stick with it, I think, and I got a lot of it for $18. We were talking about how I'm literally probably never going to use all of it up oh, yeah, because no. it's just like, I'm going to have to start giving it out in dram jars <laughs> to give to people because I'm like help me use this um yeah so definitely don't forget about your lips and don't forget about the neck and the chest it's super oh, yeah. important yeah when we're talking about the spf don't of forget course. any extra product just bring it right down into the neck right onto yeah. your decollete and you're just you're gonna you save yourself some money by not wasting products and then right. you know your neck and your chest are gonna look awesome too and always work against gravity so like always bring the product up uh, yes. the neck. we don't ever want to be pulling extra yeah. skin down gravity already does enough of that mm -hmm. for us yep and don't forget about if you're a woman and you're watching this don't forget about the inside like in between your boobs because that's like a little tunnel of sun and that can age mm -hmm. and that can get wrinkly you get dark spots there yeah you know and preventative yeah. just think preventative if you take care of, of yourself you're never going to be mad about yourself not you know taking care of yourself later down the road like it's always something you can be like oh i'm glad i did that yeah so this kind of concludes our yeah. first episode of skincare yeah. in the car at target we thank you guys for watching and we look forward to you guys tuning in next week thanks bye